Good morning. We're going to read about The Greatest Captain in the World by Johann Sankey and Joel Rood. Illustrations by Andy Catling. In a town by the shore near a seaside store, a family from the country walked by. The parents wished to shop as the children did stop to stare at the masts in the sky. Dad said, go along, we won't be long, and let us know when you're through. And, but don't trust the seamen and the yarns they are weaving, for none of their stories are true. So they raced to a ship just back from a trip, all tied to the great big dock. When they spied an old sailor trying to be a tailor as he sewed up the end of his sock. He eyed them with a sneer as the children stood in fear and asked, What are you on about? They said, We don't know, so turned to go when the sailor stood up with a shout. Now, don't you go or you'll never know why our captain is the greatest in the world. So change your tack and come on back and I'll set your mind a whirl. Once a squall tore away the ship's rigging and masts. With no way to sail on, we were sure not to last. But our captain was calm, and he showed no fear. He just smiled and tugged at his port side ear. Then he tugged on the other and stretched them both out, till the crew joined in with a heave and a shout. They were stretched three times around the whole ship, when our captain let fly with a twirl and a flip. And wouldn't you know it, those ears caught a gust, and the bow shot ahead with a surge and a thrust. Another sailor stated, so it's yarns you want to hear? Well, I've got a story that makes every sailor cheer. Our captain, one time our captain set foot on dry land, a stranger experience he never did have, for the ground he was on wouldn't budge, move or budge, not with a kick nor a hearty nudge. Then along came a critter that slithered across his path, boldly risking our great captain's wrath. What a thing to see, this slug on the ground. They stared at each other, not making a sound. Then with a fizzle, the slug melted in a haze. This was the power of our captain's salty glaze. Down came a shipmate trying to top the other two. Well, how about the time our captain saved the crew? We were out on the ocean, wailing at the time, when this wave comes to sink us and take us in our prime. Now most would have cowered, maybe tried to steer away, but not our captain, no sir, no way. He ran from the tiller to the boat's bluff bow, took in a breath of air with a deep-throated growl. He puffed out his cheeks like a whale gulping krill and blasted out air with force and a will. Then he blew a big hole in the middle of that wave. He sailed on through it, and so we were saved. A small slender sailor jumped in from the rail. Now here is a tale that'll make you go pale. Why you've never heard tell of a wave so high? It snuffed out the sun, blotting out the whole sky. The captain called out, batten down the hatches below deck's crew and secure those latches. With that, he raced to the ship's starboard side, yanked the anchor off the rail, and took a big dive. He pulled down the ship, swimming under the wave. When he got back to the surface, we knew we were saved. In the log, he later wrote, wave headed our direction, but now steering true after a slight course correction. Another tar appeared, who was tall and big around. I've got a story that'll knock you to the ground. We once saw a flag with skull and crossbones white, flying from a ship that was looking for a fight. The pirates were coming for gold to plunder, shooting at our boat to split her asunder. 
They wanted us all to reach for the sky, but our captain didn't care. He was staring at a fly. He snapped up the pest with his fathom-long tongue. Then he spat it at the pirates just for fun. The fly shot into their ship so rotten, blasted clean through, and sank her to the bottom. Another sailor showed up, sh shouldering a gun. The story's not through. It's only just begun. On a blood-red dawn, we saw a pirate fleet, hundreds of ships in rows so neat. Now it was certain we were all going to die when our captain uncrinkled his one wrinkly, crinkly eye. The pirates just stared in true disbelief. The colors in that eye gave them such a grief, a prettier sight they could never see. No treasure in the world could give them more glee. They say they stayed forever in their den, never yearning for jewels nor gold again. Soon the last of the crew sauntered up to the crowd. Mine is a tale that makes us proud. Our captain would lower his boat in the morning, put his thumb in the water without any warning. We said to the captain, that isn't so great, says he, then I'll stop and now let's wait. And we stared for two hours or more, trying to figure out what the wait was for. When up came all the monsters of the deep, a glaring and a groaning and not a one asleep. The captain yelled to each and every one, it's time you grow up, no more sucking on my thumb. And with the sailors gathered round came a horrific sound as the mate began to bark and spit, avast your yarns, and this, I warns, our captain's bringing the cargo on a ship. The sailors towed the line in record time as the children went back to their folks. They told them what they'd heard every single word, but the parents said those stories were just jokes. Their imaginations roam, now let us go home, as the wagon went clackety-clack. And as the road began to wind, the children looked behind. To see that great captain with a supply ship on his back. In the back of the book, it says, what are these sailors doing? They're caulking. This is what the sailor in the background is doing when he is hammering into the boat. It is actually hammering with oaken, tarred fibers to fill in the gaps in the planks. This is what makes wooden ships most wa mostly watertight, mostly. Then we have diversity. Historically, many ships had people from many different cultures and places on board. On a boat, sailors were more interested in what type of person you were and how well you could do your job and help the ship and crew. Where you were from or what you believed didn't matter so much for them. This means that ships would often take on people from all over and it made for very interesting encounters when a ship would come in from overseas. We have whaling. Yep, people hunted whales historically. In native cultures, it was for food and survival. In the West, it was for the oil in the whales' blubber, their fat. This oil was really good for lighting lamps. Whales were nearly hunted to extinction, meaning hunted until there were no more. But thankfully, today they are protected. We need to keep protecting whales and all our wild animals on our planet, or they will not survive. Sewing. What, solars, what sailors sewed? Well, yes, you would never throw out anything on a boat, and if a piece of clothing had a simple hole or tear in it, it made more sense to sew it up. Sailors were great at sewing because they would often make and repair their own sails on board. Guns. Guns, were, guns are a sailor's word for cannons. But wait, these sailors look like merchant sailors who are shipping things for trading and for selling. Why would they need guns? Well, their cargo might be very valuable, and people like pirates or enemy nations and groups might want them. So guns can help fight them off. Plus, a ship that could show that it would, could defend itself was less likely to be attacked or taken advantage of. 
Lastly, guns were also used for saluting other ships and forts and on special occasions. The women. Today, anyone can become a sailor, but historically women were not allowed to be part of the crew, the way we have shown in our book. However, there are many historical accounts of women coming aboard ships and assisting the ship and crew, fighting in battles, and even disguising themselves as men to become a normal member of the crew. The women crew members in our book are our symbolic attempt to acknowledge these brave women and also the many incredible women sailors and captains out there in the world today. And then they have a glossary of what everything is. Yarns, tack, squall, rigging and masts, port and starboard, bow or bow, salty, tiller, bluff bow, krill, batten down the hatches, tar, fathom, gun, avast, toe the line. And here's our author and our illustrator. The end.